Hello and welcome, my friends, to Vinruki's 7.2 Windwalker Guide. I spent a little bit of time this morning coming up with uh, what I think is going to be the best for Windwalker Monk in 7.2, so you guys have a nice, quick, easy reference um, for my thoughts, because I get asked a lot um, about some stuff. So today we're going to be going over what races I think are best, talents, PvP talents, uh, how I think you should level up your weapon, um, the best, most ideal burst combo, and then lastly, some comps that I think are going to be good for Windwalker. So I want to get through this really fast, so you guys don't have to sit around for a really long guide. Best race, in my opinion, is going to be Blood Elf, um, primarily for Horde. This is Horde. Uh, Blood Elf primarily, and then uh, Orc as a secondary. I think if Rogue Mage gets really popular, um, and monks end up dying in stuns to Rogue Mage, that a good counter to that is playing Orc or Long List, and I think it makes you basically immune to Rogue Mage deaths. Of course, the Blood Elf Silence is a nice extra little bit of offense, which I think we need right now. Um, because when Walker Monks don't really do the most damage, so having that extra utility and control is really strong. And then for Alliance, I think uh, Human is just the best, always. So, moving forward from Race, um, we're going to take a look quickly at Talents. I have this all brought up here for you guys. Uh, best Talents, I get asked a lot about these three. Um, I primarily go with Eye of the Tiger, just because I feel like all of these Talents are semi-useless. And when I say semi-useless, I just mean none of them are really that impactful. You could honestly have none of them, and you would still perform quite nicely. Um, Eye of the Tiger is nice. You just don't even have to think about it. It's a little bit of extra damage. Chi Wave, I don't like it really because it breaks crowd control, and it like fizzles out randomly. I feel like it's a really buggy spell. Um, Chi Burst can be nice. I know some Windwalker Monks play that, and the reason why um, is it can be decent for AoEing, I guess. Um, also, I feel like when I play this, sometimes I bait interrupts, which is kind of cool. So I can like bait people's interrupts. I've gotten mages counter spells and warlocks, um, spell locks too, when they get scared for the healer, even though it hits like a potato. Um, but I recommend Eye of the Tiger. You can go Chi Burst if you want. You can go Chi Wave if you want, but I think it sucks. Uh, next up, pretty much always go with Tiger's Lust, the nice root break, plus the additional uh, sprint is really, really good, plus it's utility for your team. If your teammate's in trouble, you can sprint them away. Next up, I always go with Energizing Elixir. Just makes our initial burst in the game a lot more consistent. It's a vital part of our rotation, so always go with Energizing Elixir. Uh, next up, Leg Sweep. Um, you want to use this 90% of the time. You can get away sometimes with Ring of Peace if you're fighting some cleaves. Like I know when I play Windwalker, Arcane, Druid, sometimes I'll play Ring of Peace just as an extra peel. My mage can sit in it. If he gets caught in a kidney shot or something that he can't get out of and he's going to die, I can put a Ring of Peace on him and it'll keep him alive. So that is definitely an option, something you can play around with, but primarily Leg Sweep. And then for these talents, I almost always go Healing Elixir. Sometimes I go Diffuse Magic. The only time I go Diffuse Magic is if I want to... I, maybe it could be good in duels against like a lock or something. You could transfer all their dots back over onto them, surprise them. Um, another time it could be good is if you're really trying to rush a team down like a Spellcaster Cleave. And uh, like I said, you can reflect dots back on the Warlock if he's loaded them up on you. But I think Healing Elixirs is pretty much a go-to safe option in every matchup. 90 Talents, I only play Zwen. Uh, hit Combo, I know it sounds good. 16% additional damage. Unfortunately, in PvP, it's nerfed by half, so it only does 8% additional damage, so don't really play that. And then lastly, I almost always go Whirling Dragon Punch. With some of the new traits, though, if you look at the artifact traits, we do have one. It's called Split Personality. It reduces, after you put four points into it, um, the retard, <laughs> recharge uh, <laughs> time of Storm, Earth, and Fire by uh, 20 seconds. And that transfers over to Serenity, so you can get like a 1.1 minute cooldown Serenity. I think it's like a 67 second cooldown Serenity, which is really good. So you can mess around with that if you want, but it is nerfed in PvP. I think uh, Whirling Dragon Punch and Storm Earth and Fire is probably um, what I'm going to be running with almost always. Uh, next thing on the agenda is PvP Talents. PvP Talents. Um, I play all three of these, sometimes against like a Priest team. If I'm going to get feared, I know I'm going to get feared. I play Adaptation. But ever since 7.2 came out, and um, they basically show you the trinket people are using. People exploit adaptation a lot more, and you don't get as much benefit out of it. So I normally run with Gladiator's Medallion. Um, if I'm playing Orc, I'll play Relentless a lot. Sometimes I'll play Relentless as Blood Elf as well. Um, but yeah, Gladiator Medallion, safe choice, Relentless second, and then Adaptation, Situational. These are three you have to just kind of play around with and see what you like. Um, just got to think about it. Um, reinforced Armor, 
uh, you take this 90% of the time. Sometimes I'm against like melee cleaves, if they're training me, sparring is better. So if you're getting hit by physical damage, often sparring is better than reinforced armor, but primarily uh, reinforced armor is the best. Uh, next up, Fast Feet, Eminence, Yulon's Gift. I pretty much always go with the uh, shorter cooldown on Transcendence. Not only does it give me the additional heal every time I port, um, if you look at our traits, we have one called Healing Winds gives you a max health heal over six seconds every time you port so a lower cooldown port um, makes it so not only can you get away but you also can heal yourself up quicker i feel like i don't have really that hard of a time sticking on any target where fast feet's really going to help me if i'm snared the bonus movement speed on a uh, fast feet doesn't really do anything um, the reduction in snares is good so if you feel like you really are getting kited a lot maybe try fast feet but i, I just really enjoy eminence so i almost always play that um, next up, Zen Moment, Fortifying Brew, and Control the Mist. Control the Mist, Worthless, throw in the garbage. Fortifying Brew is what I normally play with. Um, a lot of monks have been experimenting with Zen Moment. It's specifically really, really good if you are kiting a lot. So, if you're getting targeted down and you're using your port basically on cooldown, Zen Moment can be really strong. Unfortunately, it costs some chi, um, but that's okay. It's basically a pure defense talent. So, if you need to live, you're having a really hard time living, um, Zen Moment can not only help your healer top you, it can help you top yourself, um, and it is that short 45 second cooldown. The reason I like Fortifying Brute is because it helps you stay in the battle longer. We have more HP this patch, so uh, the maximum health um, is nice as well. So Fortifying Brew is my go-to, but like I said, a lot of monks have been using Zen Moment. If you feel like you're dying, uh, you can use Zen Moment as well. You can try that out. Uh, next up, Disabling Reach, 100%, 100% always increased, or always like the uh, disable range. It just makes it so when I do roll to someone, if I don't directly get on top of them, I can get that 10 yard um, ranged um, snare as well as a root. It's also good for coming back and peeling for a healer or peeling for a teammate. You can get a uh, disable out onto everyone. Um, Tiger style, like I said, you can you can use it if you want, but I, I just I don't like it very much. I don't think it provides the same utility as disabling reach. Uh, and then lastly, heavy handed strikes, I go with 100% of the time. So. Go, let's put this to what this is my normal this is my normal build the the sun on fist of fear obviously really good disarm just not nearly as good as the fist of fear is done and spinning fire blossom is just yeah it's not good so yeah this is the build i normally run on my windwalker monk these are the talents i normally run on my windwalker monk i'd say 90 percent of the time sometimes like i said situational uh, you can change it up uh, next up on the agenda is traits uh, how you should level up your weapon. What I'm doing, I'll tell you exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to get the 10% damage, stamina, go split personality, get the additional mastery from Master of Combinations, get Thunder Fist, so rush the last golden, and then after that, I'm going to get Fist of Fury damage, Rising Sun Kick damage, and then really, there's no more damage traits that are super beneficial. Um, so I'm probably going to go with the Port Heal for a little bit extra defense, and then I'm going to go with the increased chance to... Actually, never mind. I take that back. I'm going to go with the Fist of Fury damage, I'm going to go with the Rising Sun Kick damage, I'm going to go with the ad additional energy, so more energy, and then I'm going to go Healing Winds, Dodge, um, probably Strength of Zwen, Tiger Palm, blah, 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 it doesn't really matter at that point, you can fill it out how you want, but I think uh, Rushing Fist of Fury, Rising Sun Kick, extra energy uh, after getting the last golden is ideal, so that's exactly what I'm going to be doing. So that goes over that. People always ask me, oh, Vin, how do you burst? How do you burst? How do you burst? How do you burst? And I'll tell you, it's a little weird right now just because so many people are playing Orc Relentless. If you're not fighting against an Orc and you're not fighting against someone with Relentless, um, the ideal combination in my mind, I am going to show you guys this. You can write it down if you want. This is what I do. I in-cap them. I touch of death them. I leg sweep. Tiger, so Zwen. I'll put Zwen here instead of Zwen. Uh, Storm Earth and Fire times two, so that's just so your Storm Earth and Fire hits your single target. Then I Energizing Elixir, Rising Sun Kick, Strike of the Wind Lord, Tiger Palm, Fist of Fury, Whirling Dragon Punch, Blood Elf Silence. And what that looks like, um, I'll show you. It's like that. So pretend this is like a Druid or something like that. And then Leg Sweet. And then Fist of Fury. And then Blood Elf Silence if you have it with your Whirling Dragon Punch. So you can see. Uh, my ability list over on the right hand side if you want to rewatch that and see how I did that. Um, sometimes, like I said, if you're fighting an orc or they are relentless, it does not work out that perfectly. You're going to have to normally either skip your um, Strike of the Windlord. So, yeah, if you like sweep, you're only going to be able to get off like um, your 
Rising Sun Kick. Maybe you can get an extra global off before you get that Fist of Fury, but it's worth keeping them stun locked over doing optimal damage, I think, in most cases, um, just so they can't get their cooldowns off. It's also really unfortunate because um, with Orc Relentless and with the nerf to Fist of Fury stun, Fist of Fury is only a three second stun now instead of what it was a four. When you fight someone with Orc Relentless, after you leg sweep, your Fist of Fury is only like a 0.8 second stun. So. You Fist of Fury, and then you basically have to cancel it to Blood Elf Silence, but as long as your teammates are doing a lot of damage, a lot of the time, it is worth it. If you can channel your Fist of Fury, it's super good because it is such a high source of your damage, but sometimes it's worth just canceling it so you can get that Blood Elf Silence off and stop them from dropping Earthen Shield Totem, or dropping Spirit Link Totem, or y you know what I mean. Um, keeping them from being dead. Other than that, the game, I mean, uh, normal Windwalker rotation, uh, you want to keep your Rising Sun Kick up, you want to keep your Strike of the Windlord up. Look for opportunities with your Leg Sweep. If you don't have Leg Sweep, you can still get big goes with your Fist of Fury once you've built up your Transfer the Power. Um, and one of the things now to keep in mind is, since we are not playing Hit Combo, you can do stuff like just spam Black Oak Kick if you want. Black Oak Kick, Black Oak Kick, Black Oak Kick. The damage on Black Oak Kick is very minimal, so you can build up your Transfer the Power um, very quickly. You can also, if you need to, double Tiger Palm, which wasn't really great in the past. Um, so you can build up energy, or sorry, chi really fast to get out those Fists of Fury. But yeah, um, so that is what I consider the most ideal burst on Windwalker Monk. So we've gone over race, talents, PvP talents, traits, burst. Um, lastly, a lot of people ask me about comps. Um, comps, let's write some down for you guys to get a notepad out here. Uh, comps for comps for Windwalker. Um, I think that Windwalker DK is still good. You can uh, get a Pally. Um, I think it's strong. Maybe you can get a Druid. I think a lot of the time the healer is kind of optional. Um, Windwalker Mage. So either Frost or Arcane. Maybe even Fire. Fire. Like these are things you should experiment with. And you can play that with a, maybe a Pally slash Druid. Um, Windwalker Ellie. Windwalker Enhance. Both of those I think are really good with the Paladin. Pala or Druid. Um, so you could try that out. Pala or Druid. Uh, so Windwalker DK, Windwalker Mage, Windwalker Ellie, Windwalker Enhance, Windwalker Fury Warrior, I think can also be good. Um, and I like to play Windwalker Fury with a Druid normally. Another comp I want to try is Windwalker um, Demon Hunter. Sounds like that could be good, probably. Once again, play with a Druid, play with a Pally. Um, maybe even a Mistweaver. I know a lot of people when they cleave on Windwalker they like to uh, pair themselves with a Mistweaver just because it makes it so the only person they can really go on is the third target. You can't hit the Windwalker, you can't hit the Mistweaver. Maybe you could hit the Death Knight but um, they're pretty sturdy when they have a Mistweaver healing them. Um, so far the best comps I think I've played this patch are going to be Windwalker DK, um, Windwalker Mage, Windwalker Enhance, Windwalker Ellie. I think Windwalker Fury is also good. So all these comps are solid. Windwalker Demon Hunter is another thing you could experiment with. I haven't played any Windwalker Lock. That might be something that could be good. So I could see like um, maybe Windwalker Shaman Demo Lock. Windwalker Shaman Demo could be another thing that's good. Um, I'm not saying all these comps are going to be tier 1, but I'm saying these are comps you guys can try. Uh, see how you like them and they should be semi-viable just based off of how strong those classes are and how well they work together. Anyways, um, that is it for this guide. If you guys want more specifics, you can go back in my previous guides if you want to go over like macros and stuff like that. It's pretty, pretty, pretty simple. Um, simple stuff. This is basically just specifically 7.2, some of the changes, some of the things I'm doing. Um, hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. Enjoy, uh, enjoy yourself. And uh, happy hunting, friends. Peace.